personally, I think he was being very kind. Well, you know, Gov, he never likes anything, except Eric Severide. <laughs> I wonder why people raved about that movie. It didn't even make sense. Well, it made sense when I saw it. Don't forget, it's been edited for television. Well, what did they cut? They cut her nude scene with the dentist. That was very touching. <laughs> she was nude in the dentist chair? Oh, no, she was dressed. The dentist was nude. <laughs> Good night, Dad. All right. I'll... See you in the morning. Yeah, I'll turn off the lights. Oh, Bill. Frank, what are you doing here this time of night? Dying. I took a shortcut through your garden, and I fell over one of your trash barrels. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, I hope you can say the same thing for my azaleas. I didn't land in your azaleas, Bill. I landed on my... <clears throat> I didn't land on your azaleas. Well, why didn't you come in the front door? Wasn't that enough a challenge to you? Well, the back way is closer to the bus stop. You came by bus? I had to. Your mother took the car. You tell her that I wear the pants in this family and I'm taking her home with me this very instant. I'll tell her myself. Where is she? Well, I don't know, Frank, but she's not here. Well, she has to be. I've gone everywhere else in town. Well, she isn't here, Frank. Uh, what's the matter? You two newlyweds have a little squabble? What we had was a big fight. That woman is without question the most <laughs> stubborn, the most maddening, the most... Now, wa watch it, Frank. You're talking about the woman we love. <laughs> I think I could use some brandy. I know I could. Do you know she finally drove me so crazy, I locked myself in the bathroom. <laughs> that was good psychology, using their tactics. <laughs> Yeah, well, she used ours. When I came out, she was gone, and so was the car. Well, Frank, it's none of my business. I know that young newlyweds fight over her cooking or his wanting to stay out all night with the boys, but what do old newlyweds fight about? <laughs> Medicare. <laughs> Finish your drink, and I'll drive you home. Oh, I can't go home till I find Ella. Well, I'm sure that's where she is. She probably gets a little ride to cool off. She's waiting for you right now. Oh, you think so? Frank, there's one thing I can guarantee you about my mother. She doesn't stay angry very long. I'm sure that when you get home, she'll be sitting in the living room waiting for you. Well, I hope so. You know people our age shouldn't fight. Then why not? Well, there's always the chance. We'll never get to make up. <laughs> where the linens are for the guest room. Well, are you and Frank going to spend the night? Not Frank, just me. J.J., that man is the most stubborn, the most maddening, the most... Uh-oh. What does that mean? That means that when you have your first fight, you usually go home to mother. You came home to son. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, you're adorable. Now, tell me what happened. There's nothing to tell. It's all over. To think that my first marriage lasted 50 years and this one didn't even go five months. Well, what happened? We're just not compatible. And he's too old for me. <laughs> Frank is the exact same age you are. Oh, that's what he told me. But I think he lied about his age. Oh. I thought that was something only women did. Women and old men. <laughs> but I haven't told you the half of it, J.J. Frank left me. He left you? Mm-hmm. We had an argument and he locked himself in the bathroom. I waited and waited for him to come out. Finally, I got in the car and left. 
Where did you go? To a gas station. To a gas station? To use the bathroom. <laughs> when I got back to the house, Frank was gone. Oh, Grandma, Frank loves you, and he's probably very worried about you. I'm going to call him and tell him you're here. Don't you home. dare, J.J., I don't want to speak to him. You don't have to speak to him, I'll speak to him. Oh, please, J.J., I don't want him to know that I'm here. Oh, all right, Grandma. But I think you'll feel differently in the morning. Now, I'll get you set up in the guest room, and then I'm going downstairs, and I'm going to call Frank and tell him you're all right. Then when you come back upstairs, J.J., let me know if he's all right. <laughs> Yes, I know what time it is. What are you still doing up? I thought you went to bed an hour ago. Uh, Dad, there's something I'd better tell you. Do you have a minute? Not really. I'm expecting a phone call. Well, this is pretty important. Well, so is the phone call. You mean you don't even have a minute to spare? Yes, I have a minute, but your minutes usually turn out to be ten minutes. <laughs> Can't it wait until morning? Well, I suppose it could, but I think you'd rather I tell you right now. No, I'd rather you tell me in the morning. Oh, you feel that way now, but you won't feel that way in the morning. And when I tell you in the morning, you're going to say, why didn't you tell me that last night? J.J., please, in the morning. Hello? Oh, Frank, I was just going to call you. Yes, yes, Grandma's here. <laughs> She's here? Why didn't you tell me? I was going to tell you that in the morning. Why were you going to wait till morning? Because you didn't have a minute to spare tonight. I'm sorry, Frank. Oh, I didn't know you were here tonight. I didn't know Frank was here tonight. Well, I was going to tell you. When? In the morning. <laughs> oh, well, Frank, I guess uh, Dad was driving you home when Grandma got here. Oh, no, no, you can't talk to her now because she's upstairs in bed. You'll be here first thing in the morning? Okay, Frank. Bye-bye. Where is she? In the guest room. What are you going to do? I'm going to wake her up and send her back to her husband where she belongs. Well, you can't do that. You haven't heard her side of it yet. All right, I'll listen to her side, then I'll send her back where she belongs. <laughs> Dad, they've had an argument, and just because Frank's a man doesn't mean he's automatically right. I didn't say he was automatically right. Well, no, but you were implying it. Besides, how do you know what Frank is really like? You've never had to live with him. Yeah, but I've lived with my mother. And sometimes she can be downright stubborn and completely obstinate. Well, that's a first. What's a first? A mother who takes after her son. <laughs> I resent that. And I resent the fact that Frank can walk out on your mother and you can stand there and take his side of it. Now, how did you arrive at that conclusion when Frank is home all alone and she's upstairs asleep in our guest room? Because Grandma told me he walked out on her. Well, he didn't walk far. He went to the bathroom. <laughs> now, look, J.J., I don't intend to get in a fight with you about somebody else's fight about which we know absolutely nothing about. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because you've already decided who's at fault. I have not decided who's at fault. Then how come you're not even interested in hearing your own mother's side of the story? All right, I'm interested. What's her side of the story? I don't know. <laughs> and so it wasn't until after I drove Frank home and came back that I found out that you were here. So you see, Grandma, Frank didn't walk out on you. He was out looking for you. Yes, and worried half to death, I might add. Well, I feel ridiculous, and I guess I should. You and Frank are so well suited for each other, I can't imagine you fighting over anything. Especially Medicare. Medicare? <laughs> Medicare was the last straw. This argument has been building since our honeymoon, when I became aware of his secret suitcase. What secret suitcase? A little brown suitcase he brought along on our honeymoon. I noticed he kept it under the bed and locked at all times. I didn't say anything about it because I felt it was none of my business. Well, how did you know it was locked? I tried to open it. <laughs> well, I, I had to know what was in it. It was driving me crazy. Every morning and every night, he'd take it into the bathroom with him. Well, did it ever occur to you he might be wearing one of those men's girdles? Oh, no, Bill. He just lets it all hang out. <laughs> Then you did find out what was in the suitcase. Yes, he finally told me. When? When he walked into the bedroom as I was prying it open with a screwdriver. <laughs> well, what was in the suitcase? Vitamins. Vitamins? Vitamins? Well, everybody takes vitamins. Why was he keeping that a secret? Not as Frank does. He's compulsive. He's addicted to them. Would you believe it if I told you Frank takes close to 75 vitamins a day? He must have tremendous energy. 
He takes big ones, little ones, pink ones, blue ones. You better keep him out of a shower. He's liable to dissolve. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be so bad if he'd just take them and let me alone. But no, I have to take them too. Do you know that I have been taking 2,000 units of vitamin E a day for the last five months? Vitamin E, what's that supposed to do for you? Oh, that's good for your heart, it's good for your liver, and if you're a woman, it's supposed to make you fertile. <laughs> Frank never told me that. Let's get back to Medicare. <laughs> Well, Frank is one of those people who goes for a physical examination every six months. And he wants me to do the same. And you know how afraid I am of doctors. Yes, I know. Go on. So, two weeks ago, I went to Frank's doctor and had a complete checkup. Well, you went to the doctor. What was the argument about last night? Last night, he started insisting I go see a psychiatrist. What for? to get me over my fear of seeing doctors. <laughs> and I told him I wasn't going to see a psychiatrist, even if it is covered by Medicare. <laughs> That's Frank, how do you get it? No, no, JJ, let me. I want to talk to him alone. Well, Dad, I must say this is all very reassuring. In what way? Well, because when I get married and we have our first fight, I know that if I come home to you, I'll be in good hands. And if you come home to me after your first fight, young lady, be prepared for your second fight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you and Mom fight a lot? Oh, no more than any other happily married couple. <laughs> mm, that much, eh? <laughs> good Hello, morning, JJ. Hi. Hello, Frank. Hello. Bill, uh, Frank and I have something we'd like to tell you. No, no, that's not necessary. Let's just have some coffee and forget the whole thing. Uh, Bill, uh, Frank just told me, and I think you should know, you're going to be a brother. I'm going to be a what? Grandma, I didn't know people your age could adopt children. No, you don't understand. I just came from the doctor and got the results of her physical. Ella is pregnant. Are you trying to tell me that my mother's going to become a mother? <laughs> yes, Bill. Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful? It's amazing. It's more than amazing. <laughs> it's inconceivable. Well, you can call it whatever you wish, Bill. It's true. It can't be a woman of your age. It's physically impossible. No, no, Dad, it is possible. I mean, in the animal world, late life births are not uncommon at all. Now, you take sea turtles. My mother is not a sea turtle. She can't even swim. <laughs> Bill, I can show it to you in black and white. I have the blood test report right here. Can't be a woman of 70. How could this possibly happen? Vitamins. <laughs> I don't care how many vitamins you take, Frank. She's still a woman of 70. Actually, I'm closer to 65 than I am to 70, Bill. Well, even women of 65 don't have babies. Grandma, would you and Frank like this child? Oh, of course we would, J.J. It'll give us a whole new lease on life. Well, then I think it's wonderful. Frank, there must be some mistake. Well, that was my first thought, too. So uh, I double-checked uh, with Dr. Carter to make absolutely certain. What did Dr. Carter say? Well, not very much at first. He just sat there, staring out the window. Well, then what'd he do? He took up smoking again. <laughs> but he did finally confirm it. Ella is going to give birth. To what, a nine-pound vitamin pill? <laughs> uh, the lab must have made some mistake. Oh, that was my second thought, too. So I asked Dr. Carter to double-check the lab. And there's no mistake. The blood report shows that Ella is three months pregnant. Oh, and incidentally, Dr. Carter wants permission to do a paper on you for the AMA Journal. <laughs> well, I refuse to believe it. Bill, accept it. And don't worry, whatever I have, I'll always like you the best. Mother, before you get completely carried away, I really would like to have you examined by Dr. Graham. Bill, Dr. Carter's been my doctor for the past 30 years. He's the most competent and reliable physician. Well, nevertheless, I would feel better if our family doctor examined my mother. Well, suppose Dr. Graham confirms the diagnosis. Then you go straight to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> well, it's impossible. A, a woman of 70 doesn't have a baby. What about that woman in Lima? She was almost 80. Lima? Peru. I know where Lima is. A woman living in Lima supposedly gave birth when she was 80 years old. When did this happen? During an earthquake. During? That's probably why it happened. <laughs> now, Mother, I'd feel a lot better if you'd let me make an appointment with Dr. Graham. 
All right, Bill. I'll call Dr. Graham. <laughs> Have you had breakfast yet? No, and I'm starved. Well, that's understandable. You could be eating for three now, you know. Three? <laughs> Twins run in my family. Uh, Dr. Graham, please. Uh, hello, this is J.J. Drickwater. I would like to make an appointment for my grandmother, please. Wednesday. Fine. And the name is Mrs. Ella Courtright. Thank you. Go all set, Grandma. Wednesday at 10.30. Thank you, J.J. No, I'd like some breakfast. Yeah, Sarah, I fix you something. What would you like? A pizza. <laughs> a nice guy. I am such a nice guy. Why do these things happen to me? I feel sorry for the governor. I am sitting on the biggest story of this campaign. He won't let me release it, and you feel sorry for him. Well, it's not an easy thing to be 49 years older than your baby brother. <laughs> what a story. I mean, you can pick up a newspaper anytime and read about a governor's daughter having a baby, but a governor's mother? Yes. Oh, George, it's for you on oh. one. Hello. Oh, hi, J.J. No, the governor isn't here. Well, he's over at the fairgrounds. He said he'd be back in a few minutes. You'll be here in five minutes? Well, it sounds urgent. Okay, I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye. Well, that was short and sweet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, governor, that's adorable. But isn't it a little early to be buying toys? I didn't buy it. I wanted it at the fair. George, have someone take that over to the Children's Hospital, please. Right, Governor. Oh, J.J. calls. She'll be over in five minutes. Oh, fine. All right, Maggie, let's get some work done. What's the first thing I have to attend to? <laughs> yes, no. Yes, Governor. Hello? Hey. Oh, yes. Fine, yes. Send her right in. Thank you very much. Maggie, would you excuse me as my mother? Of course, Governor. Hello, Mrs. Courtright. Hello, Maggie. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what are you doing downtown? We went to Clark's bookshop across the street to buy a book of names for the baby. And then Frank had to go to the health food store, so I thought I'd come up and spend a few minutes with you. Well, aren't you being a little premature with that book? Not at all. Besides, it's fun. How do you like the name Elwood? Elwood for a baby? Of course, for a baby. I'm not naming a chimpanzee, you know. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, Mother. There are probably more chimpanzees named Elwood than there are babies. Elwood happened to be Frank's father's name. Well, then keep your fingers crossed that it's a girl. Hi. Hi, Grandma. Hello, J.J. I want your opinion. I'm glad you're here. How do you feel about Elwood? Elwood? Do you mean my Elwood? What do you mean, your Elwood? Elwood, the little chimpanzee at the children's room. <laughs> Never mind. I have to meet Frank in front of the building in ten minutes. Uh, don't forget, you and Frank are coming to do it tonight. We know. See you then. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Dad. Boy, I didn't know how lucky I was. What do you mean? Well, my name could have been Elwood. My mother thinks Elwood's a nice name for a baby. Well, it doesn't matter whether she likes Elwood or not. She's not going to use it. Grandma isn't pregnant. Are you sure? Yes. Are you absolutely sure? Positive. Well, how did you find out? Well, I don't know about you, but I couldn't wait until Wednesday, so I went over to see Frank's doctor this morning. Dr. Carter told you she wasn't pregnant. Dr. Carter wasn't there. Well, then who told you? Well, Dad, it's a long story. Uh, do you have time? <laughs> for this, I have a lifetime. <laughs> Well, don't you look pretty. <laughs> Can I fix your drink? Uh, no, thank you, Dad. Oh, yes. Uh, no, no, not yet. Uh, Dad, I gave it a great deal of thought while I was getting dressed, and I don't feel we should tell Grandma and Frank when they first get here. I think we should wait. Till when? Until after dinner. Because if we tell them before dinner, it'll spoil their dinner and we'll be sorry. Well, if we wait till after dinner, they may be sorry they ate dinner. Whenever we tell them, it'll be awful. They both have their hearts set on this. Oh, well, I think my mother will be relieved. Of course, Frank won't be walking as tall when he leaves as when he came in. 
Still, he'll be able to exhale for the first time in three days. I'll get it. Thank you, Sarah. Believe me, J.J., when you have to let a man down, there's no better time than when he's got a drink in his hand. <laughs> You to drink. Oh, nothing for me, thank you. Nor me. Uh, are you sure you won't have a cocktail? Uh huh. I don't believe a woman should consume alcohol during her pregnancy. And I already had a few at the club this afternoon. He has a lot of drinks at the club this afternoon. Well, when the fellas heard the news, they were all toasting me. Grandma, Frank, there's something I want to tell you. Well, actually, I, I don't it, want it, to... J.J., it... you better let me tell him, because sometimes when you tell people things, you know, he mix work. I'll, I'll tell him. Uh, Mother Frank, uh, what J.J. was going to tell you was that sometimes when people are anticipating an important event, they could be very disappointed when that important event that they were anticipating didn't come off as it, they anticipated. It. You understand what I'm getting at? Dad, you better let me. <clears throat> you see, I really didn't want to tell you this until after dinner, because I was afraid if I told you before dinner, it would spoil your dinner. But Dad didn't think that we should wait, and I didn't think that we should tell you during dinner, so we both decided the best thing to do would be to tell you right now before dinner. Do you understand? I think I prefer Bill's version. <laughs> what, what we're trying to say is... Uh, you're not going to become parents. No, you're not pregnant, Mother. I'm not. She's not. Definitely not. Dr. Carter assured me there was no mistake either in his part of the labs. He double-checked everything. Oh, he was right. There's no mistake. Then I don't understand. Well, the lab report, which indicated you were three months pregnant, wasn't yours. Then whose was it? Dr. Carter's nurse. His nurse? Oh, you mean that pretty young blonde? Yeah, that pretty young blonde. I don't remember seeing any pretty blonde nurse in Dr. Carter's office when I went for my checkup. Oh, she started work the next day, Grandma. That's how she was able to make the switch. Yes, when she saw on your records that you were newlywed, she assumed that you were young, so she switched her blood samples for yours to see if she was pregnant, and she was. Unfortunately, when the lab sent the report back, she was out of the office, and Dr. Carter saw it first. Yeah, and then the whole thing snowballed, and she was too frightened to tell the truth. I hope you're not too disappointed. No. No, actually, I'm not. But I think Frank is. Oh, not really. But the boys at my club will be. They all started taking vitamins. <laughs> I've always lived my life believing everything happens for the best. <laughs> now, what do you say to some dinner? I'm starved. So have I. And so have I. Let's have dinner. <laughs> You know, Frank, I'm amazed at the way you're taking this news about not being a father. Oh, what the heck, Bill? <laughs> we can still keep trying. Good morning, Mommy. Good morning, JJ. Is Dad out jogging? No, he had to dispense with his jogging this week. They're repairing a the street. Well, where is he then? Out in the garden, playing catch with Gov. Oh, well, he won't get much exercise that way. How can you get so tired just from throwing a ball? No, from just throwing it. From throwing it and then running after it. <laughs> that dog has no interest in sports. <laughs> Thank you. Maggie, did the mail come yet? Oh, yes. Oh, and we got a card from your mother. Guess where they are. Mexico. Oh, let me see. Well, they said they didn't have any plans. They were just going to get in the car and drive like a second honeymoon. She mailed this from a small village in southern Mexico. Oh, it sounds so remote and so primitive. They must be having a wonderful time. They must be. She says Frank's been drunk for three days. Well, Frank doesn't drink that much. Well, he was afraid to drink the water, and he needed something to take all those vitamins with. He settled on tequila. 